This is Dave, he's a professional rider. retirement package. All right, so today we're here with the Lycan 250cc final drive. Uh, is it increase or decrease? I'm not sure how you guys call it. But see this? This is a specific China Motorsport rear sprocket custom modified 42 tooth chain for this bike which is 530 uh, chain link and this right here is also a front sprocket 17 teeth and that thing right here from here to here is around 25 millimeter and that is specific for this bike so the bike right now has a ratio of 2.80 final drive I want to decrease that ratio to 2.47. So that means I get more top speed and low torque. Lo and behold, the incredible life fan, 12,868 miles. So this guy has been driven all winter long, even though it looks perfectly clean, you know. That's a full body detailing job. I think I missed somewhere. Let me just swipe that out a little bit. That's right. I just cleaned my boy. So, it looks shiny clean, right? Because it was detailed by me. You don't see any detail job done as this before, right? Yeah. Oh, might I add, I actually changed uh, the factory recommendation rear wheel before it was a 130 by 90 by 15 because I'm planning to do the drive upgrade. I changed the rear to, before it was 130, I changed it to 140. So there may be an issue with the chain for me to cut it. But most likely when changing to 17 to 42, I read a bunch of posts from other forums that you don't need to cut the chain. But if it comes down to that, I'm gonna have to do it. Now, you believe it. Let's get to work. All right, to remove the rear wheel, you, well, it's not that hard. Well, first we're removing the sprocket. The trick is, is to find two uh, a nut at a time and loosing it. So I'm dropping the, the, the bike on the ground so it won't move. And then I'm loosing the nuts and then I'm, I'm switch and I'm putting it back up. Then I am you know, rotating it to the next two nut. The, uh, the disc has four nuts. What I meant by the disc is the, uh, the rear sprocket so 
then you have to remove the uh, the chrome cover this one is ABS plastic it has four holding screws so first the first one is from the body it's inside so you have to remove one of the panel and then one at the bottom and then two on the left side the other two are eight millimeter and the first two are just standard uh, 5.5 allen wrench I think so once you get that so it's, it's you have to drop the bike then the rear wheel won't move then you have to loosen the front sprocket right and after that you get on to removing the rear nut well the long axle bolt I think it's a M14 it looks like one of those uh, you've seen those dirt bikes this is the exact same same specs and the uh, the torque for this one is 42 foot pound even though this bike is a clone of a Yamaha XVS 250 but the torque for the rear wheel is not because the original Yamaha XVS 250 would use a drum disc and that has more weight and it's more close while this one has less weight and it's more like a part so I had to use a different manual to get that torque to compare it as that. So now, try to compare here. You can see this is less. That's 42. Try to compare more, but I've already compared this inside. Same tooth. Now you see the model number. Good for you. A 17. Since I want to show you guys what's happening here. The spot is clean. The sprocket is already installed. All right, this is the old sprocket, and this is the new one. So everything is prepped for installation. Now, since we're in the business to change the rear wheel, and this pad right here, literally, is now, this pad right here is now 12,000 miles. Okay, let's recap. The first stock drive is 2.81. Even though I miss uh, something in the beginning, I said 2.80, but I was just going over my memory in my head. So you would have a 45 tooth. Well, tooth is singular, but people often says tooth, but we usually should be 45 teeth rear sprocket and then a uh, a, f a 16 teeth front sprocket so the changes here to decrease the drive ratio is 42 teeth rear sprocket and um 17 front sprocket granted you can find the model number for the front sprocket as i have and i only had to buy it one time but you will not be able to find the rear sprocket because it's a 530 and there is no way that you would get the actual Yamaha rear sprocket because that is also a 520 chain. And then the size for the front sprocket is different unless you'd have to literally remove your whole engine just to change that, that gear rod to match the original Yamaha. It's impossible. But there is another possibility that you can get it and it's from China. And even that takes a 
hefty lot of research which is why i said this is from china motorsport because obviously i sponsor chinese stuff all right the moment of truth is here see that the wheel spins freely so that means that's a good job it's all the way in this will be 14. This is 114. This is not one. This is not 116. It's not 112. This is 114. All right. This is a chain breaker, so you don't need to follow this. What happened is the uh, rivet side of the chain goes here and it stays here, so it will move. Tighten this first. Right? And then this right here. This breaks the rivet. That is the rivet. See? If you want to do it, this is the chain, right? That's the master link. The benefit of having this 42 tooth is that when you when you cut the chain, this actually fits tight. So when the chain gets to be finished, it stretches properly. While the 45 tooth uh, sprocket, when you put it on, it's already stretched so far that when your chain is finished, it finish around 4,000 miles. So you're gonna have to literally, you know, cut the chain by length so that you can actually adjust it. While on this one, you install it with the 114 and it fits perfectly so you don't have to do anything that's the benefit but then remember that you have to change the front sprocket to 17 so you can have the exact 114 too right this is the bike after i washed it this is all the i clean this windshield daily and so is my lights, and they get dirty all the time. Ooh, this is see what riding in the winter is like. Yeah. So I was So yeah. The changes that I've made. Not only did I change the seat to uh, LF250E seat, which has the mark, you'll see it on the video, but now I also cover it with a cover. When you cover it, this one looks finished. While the bike comes, it comes with a gap. That's why I didn't like it. See this? When you're pushing this down, your hand don't hurt. So this is a, not only it's a nice design, but it also protects your, your bare hand. And then you got the exhaust shield right here. Why I put it here, because when I sit down, my foot is often touching here and the heat is kept away from my, my foot. Titanium weave can get around. Then you got the shifter. 
That's not the original shifter, that's a LF250E shifter. And then you got the headlight. That's also not the original headlight. So everything has been upgraded from this. Alright. So now let's start the bike. Thirteen thousand one hundred and fourteen. 